Hey guys, I'm Vernon Kidder back again. Welcome back to another. <laughs> Welcome back to another DC Comics review, guys. Um, once again, <coughs> being that my my DC pool is a little smaller, um, this will be the final time that I do a review of DC Comics just on for one week. Um, the next time you see it, it'll be be two weeks because my DC pool is so small uh, most of the DC comics I get are now in trade uh, so uh, you'll never I'm not just gonna review four comics like I usually do for the past couple, and that's all I have today is four comics uh, there was no books for me that from my pull list for a couple of weeks uh, yes I will be picking up absolute Superman that'll be the next review along with um, some other because like I said, I'm going to be doing two weeks. And I know also, I want to address this real quick because I know there was a lot of people that has been asking, where's the Marvel reviews? I am so behind on my Marvel. I'm talking about months. And I will, I promise you, I'll get those out as soon as I can. Um, my, my Marvel reviews out. Uh, and I'll definitely the independent stuff too. So, But we're just doing DC today. Um, I got four books. And these are the last books that I, I picked up because, like I said, uh, everything now is just, is like bi-weekly now for me in terms of DC because my pulls are so small. So we're going to kick this off with uh, Detective Comics uh, number uh, 1090. Tom Taylor's uh, run begins with this. Got Tom Taylor and Miguel Jenkin uh, on the book. This was good. This was a very solid issue. Um, we are getting a glimpse of the past, uh, and I'm sure probably people have already seen it or ha haven't heard, but we're seeing Thomas Wayne being a doctor, and that's always been the, the this kind of the stress, I think, uh, for most Batman fans. It's like, okay, he's a doctor, right? Like, you know, it's always it always comes down to like. How is he? How does he have all that money? You know things like that. And yes, doctors can make a lot, but you know it's with the Waynes is kind of weird, you know. But here we see Thomas Wayne being a doctor, and we also see uh, people pretty much Eagle literally. I would say bruising him, like li not bruising him, but more like like why did you do it? Why did you do it? Meanwhile, Batman's on the case on on a case for himself, so it flips back and forth between the past and the modern times. And one of the interesting things at the end, which I, I it's kind of already been spoiled, but we see the person Thomas Wayne had uh, saved, and it is a really really bad omen because we know if you know Batman's history we all know who is the one that gunned down Thomas and his wife Martha yes Thomas Wayne saves Joe Chill that was the big that was the big close cliffhanger that was that was a good cliffhanger Mr. Taylor uh, is pulling a lot of Peter David out of his out of himself with that Peter David being the master of cliffhangers yeah he pulled the big Peter David I was like okay that caught me off guard but this was solid, very solid, very solid issue. We move on to uh, Green Lantern Dark. Uh, this is an Elseworld story, and this is uh, written by Tay uh, Bromball, uh, Werther Della Del, I'm, I'm, if I butchered, I apologize, and Giovanna Nero. Um, this seems to come out of the Tangent universe, This, but this Green Lantern is nothing like the Green Lantern you think of from, you know, the core DC universe. This Green Lantern is more mystical and more supernatural based. Uh, the world is dark and gloomy. People are scared to come out at night because of hordes and hordes of, uh, as you can see on the cover, like zombies. 
that are all being led by Grundy, Solomon Grundy. And we see also, as the Green Lantern of this world is telling the story, that the heroes of this world, they tried and failed, and she is but, but one of the few left that are still able to. And she tries to go about her days, she tries to lead a low profile and, and, until a young, uh, a young, um, I would say fan, but a young uh, bystander basically recognize who she is, and they're like, that's the Green Lantern, please help us, use it, and she's just like, I don't want to do this, and, you know, I'm, you know, they're, they're after me, if I bring out, you know, she's, she's looking at it from a point of view of like, though I can help these people, it's going to bring more suffering, and I understood where she was coming from with that, I was like, okay, I get it. But if you can help these people help, and it takes the the young bystander to kind of gain her, push her to helping. Um, the artwork was really diff was uh, very interesting as well. It, it's it's dark, it's gloomy. Um, the shades, you know, like here, like for example, look how she's she's dressed there. Like you could tell that she has she is something, but she keeps her. She keeps her, her face covered. And even when they show like Grundy in this world, he's look kinda cool and things like that. Uh, I was it was fun. It was is this was fun. Um this is a I believe a bi monthly series. It's not it's not coming out uh every week. Uh, it is a mini series, I believe. It's not a uh ongoing. But uh for an Elseworld story, this was this was pretty good. I I very much enjoyed it. I was Looking forward to that. Well, next up, we move on to Nightwing, number 119. Uh, this is uh, Dan Waters and Dexter Soy's great... Dexter Soy's great art. His artwork is great. Um, a new creative team for Nightwing. Tom Taylor has uh, ended his run, his beautiful Nightwing run. I loved everything about Tom Taylor. Tom Taylor's run... And I, I have to say this, Tom Taylor's run was basically a love letter to us fans who were tired of Tom Taylor disrespecting Nightwing. Every Elseworld story or every story that wasn't in the main Prime universe, what would happen? What would happen? Nightwing was always like the, the cannon fodder or the, the, the first to die. That was, this was Dexter's... Uh, Tom Taylor's run was his way of saying, I'm sorry. That's how I look at it. And it was great. But this is this was pretty good. This was Dan Waters, um, uh, Waters, uh, what, yeah, Waters, yeah, Waters. <laughs> he does a, a good job of capturing the voice of, you know, of Dick, like, um, Dick Grayson, like, like Tom did. Um, Dexter Soy's artwork is just Monte Bene. Um, very much indeed. The story is about there's a new uh, circuit of uh, underground circuit that's trying to come into Bloodhaven and terrorize Bloodhaven and things like that. And Bloodhaven is uh, Nightwing's territory. That's his. That's his city, and he's not going to stand for that. Um, in the meantime, we have Nightwing and remember his sister, uh, basically, who is the mayor of Bloodhaven. They she introduces him to this uh, CEO of this cyber tech uh, group, and uh, Nightwing. Also, but the only difference is, while Nightwing is dealing with this new, this new uh, terror group that's coming in, there is also this uprising in tech, techno, uh, techno criminals as well. Uh, and let me just show you like some of Dexter Soy's artwork. Uh, like look, look at like like look at that. Look at look, look at that. Look look at that. That's beautiful, right? Look at look at his artwork is just beautiful. Uh, but in the meantime, you know he Nightwing is uh, is able to find the criminals involved, but unfortunately we see some high-tech and the high-tech adversaries that 
have come in and what Nightwing Dick doesn't know is who's controlling it and I know this book has been out for a while but I still won't spoil it uh, but it was fun Nightwing number one was fun uh, and last but not least we have Absolute Wonder Woman I got the the variant cover uh, the Jim Lee cover I had to get the Jim Lee y'all know me I love Jim Lee and this Jim Lee cover looks straight out of straight out of Final Fantasy you cannot tell me this does not look like something out of Final Fantasy um, this was good this was real good I very much enjoyed Kelly Thompson does the writing this was great um, so what is the what are the differences so basically Diana she is still an Amazon she's still an Amazon but it takes her some time to remember who she is though she was raised in the underground in the underworld in hell by Cersei's and Cersei's can't say Amazon they basically the gods being who they are basically punishes the Amazons and took young Diana from the mascara and gave her brought her down to hell and Cersei's told and they told Cersei, you're going to have to take care of her. Now, Cersei's at the beginning, she don't give a crap. She's like, well, let her die. You know, there's even, there's points. What a lot of it, it's, it's kind of funny because when I'm, when I'm reading this and we're seeing Cersei's and we're seeing Diana, try, you know, as a baby, I'm thinking of young Hercules, where they said in, in most of the legends that Hercules strangled a, a serpent by himself as a baby because it was going to kill him and he was just doing it because he was a baby that happens in this i was like that's that's her, that's like hercules right there i was and i'm not talking from the disney's but that's just in the myth of hercules it was really interesting and while diana makes her her debut in the mortal world in the man's world or so she is able to we start seeing that that Cersei starts to really care for diana and you know and as much as she wants to say the word Amazon, she can't. It's like almost like it's it's, it's like a, a hex on her. She can't say it. But she's able to get Diana to remember who she is and what she was. But we get to see some really interesting abilities now from Diana. Not just with her, her Amazon strength, but more of what Cersei's has taught her. And it's really cool from, you know, from her sword here to her her lasso in a sense uh, it was beautifully done and uh, the monster that she's facing in here is as you can see is very gigantic and she's holding her own but at the same time uh, Diana realizes who she is and what she is and she goes on I love how she goes on to say I am Diana of Themyscira uh, last last of the Amazons uh, daughter of Circe's princess of hell witch of the West Isles like she goes on and it was really really cool to see you know this just gives Wonder Woman a different look and feel but I really liked it I had a feeling that um, like here's baby Diana killing the serpent you know I had a feeling that um, she may have been if they were going to do anything I had a feeling I was maybe 25% uh, believing that Cersei's would probably raise her like I had a feeling I'm like okay if she's not going to be raised by Hippolyta then who's like one of Diana's major foes that Diana has never really beaten her beaten her in a fight she's always like kind of outwitted her and I was like it could be Cersei's Cersei's is one of my favorite is my favorite Wonder Woman foe so uh, I was this was really good I really enjoyed this um I would say outside of the two uh, uh absolute books I, I this I put this over Batman 
Because with Batman, and somebody said, oh my God, really? Yes, I put this over Batman. And here's the reason why. Because with Batman, I, I knew what I was getting with that. There was not much you're, you're going to change with Batman. But with Wonder Woman, I was really interested in that. And I'm really interested in reading Superman. So I've been staying away from a lot of things. But all in all, very good. I enjoyed it very much. That was great. Well, those are the four books that I picked up for the last week of DC books. So there was a couple weeks I, I didn't have anything for DC. Uh, like I said, guys, my DC reviews will change. They'll they'll do when I do do reviews now. It'll be like two weeks because my 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 DC pull is so small. Uh, so it it I I rather do more than just four books or so. I'd rather do more so when I review it. So, anyway, you guys tell me in the comment section if you have read any of those books that I picked up. Tell me in the comment section down below. What did you think? Um, if I was given the book of the week out of those books, uh, definitely uh, Absolute Wonder Woman. That, that nailed it. Close second to me would be, uh, would be uh, Detective Comics. That would get the... Okay, let's put it like this. Gold will go to Absolute Wonder Woman. Silver to uh, to Detective, and the bronze would actually go to it would go to uh, it would go to Green Lantern Dark. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed the Nightwing, but you know the Dark was up there. That was cool. Anyway, guys, you guys take care. Like I said, guys, before the next time you will see reviews of DC. Uh, you will see absolute what I thought about absolute Superman, uh, the JSA, uh, Black Lightning comes out, um, and things like that. But other than that, guys, you guys take care. Thanks.